Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I want to talk about testing with Rust. So you can do this using Cargo. So inside your command line, if you type out Cargo and then test, you press enter here, Cargo will run all of your testing functions and then give you a result. It'll say that, you know, two tests have failed or, you know, four have passed. It'll say all those figures for you so you can then obviously, you know, work on those errors. So to actually write a test, we can do this inside the main.rs source file. Now keep in mind that you might commonly see tests happening in libraries, but this will work the exact same way. So down here, we can start by defining a separate module that is specific for testing. Okay, so I'm going to say, okay, MOD, make a new module and call this module something like decode underscore tests all right so now inside here I can start to define some testing functions we need to actually mark these functions though as testing functions so if we type out hashtag and then square bracket test that right there is saying it's basically telling cargo that the function following this line is going to be a testing function so run this all right so down here we can actually just make a new function. So we'll say, okay, fn and call this function test underscore basic for a basic test. Inside here we can do a simple assertion. We can assert that something is true. We can do this using the assert macro. So we'll say a double -S, s e r t assert. Inside here we can pass in something that we think will be true. For example, one will equal 1. This test should pass because 1 is obviously equal to 1 so we should be fine right here. If I was to run this, um, this, this test, so cargo test, press enter, we should see that we have 1 pass. There we are, we ran 1 test, the test was test basic and it passed. So that is your simple test in Rust. Now, keep in mind that this module is going to compile no matter what. Even if you type out cargo build, press enter, this module will still be compiled. So to actually avoid compiling this module unless you're actually testing, you can use this attribute. So we'll say, you know, hashtag CFG and then test. That right there prevents this module from being ran, sorry, compiled unless you run cargo test. Okay, now back to this test, a test will fail if it panics. So right now we know that this is actually a successful test, we'll say that's okay, right? We can actually make this test fail. We can say, okay, panic, oh no. Right there, we've made a perfect assertion inside this function, panic will fail this entire test. If I run this program, we should see that, or run this test, we should see that we get a failure. What do we get? Boom, we get a failure. So it panicked at or no. Okay? Keep that in mind. So a test will fail if it panics. Now, we can also, I'll keep that right there, we can also um, say that a test should panic. We can say that we expect a test to fail. For example, here we have panic, so we know that as a program, we know that this test is going to fail, all right? We can mark this up down here, and we can say hashtag should panic. So now we've made this test from a failure into a success because of that annotation or that attribute right there, okay? Run this one one more time, and we should see we get one pass, zero failures. There we are, okay? Now... That is a simple assertion. We can also do something that we can we can see if something equals something else. That is called assert equal. All right. So down here we can make a new a new test. So we'll say hashtag test and make a new function. We can say test underscore equals. Inside here we can make an example of a test that we expect. You know, something should equal something else. So we'll say assert underscore eq that new macro right there 
the first argument will be the um, the thing to actually test. So we'll say, okay, test that two. Sorry, test that the result of the second argument. Sorry about that. So test that one plus one equals two. That is the assert equal macro. All right. So running this test, we should see that we get two passes because one plus one obviously does equal two. All right. Run this, and we get two passes. Perfect. We can also do a assert not equals. So we'll say assert, and then not equal. We can pass in here two, and then one plus two. So now we know that obviously one plus two equals three. That's two. So this assertion is going to be okay. It should not panic. We're saying this should not equal that. All right. Save this one. Run this one more time. We should see we get two successful tests, and we do. So here we have two successful tests, but we have three assertions. So a test is going to be an entire test function, not your amount of assertions. Keep that in mind. Now, we can also say that we want to actually ignore a test. So if a test takes a long time, a lot of power, we can actually add an attribute here to ignore this test. We can say, okay, hashtag ignore, like that. So now, only this test will be ran. Run this, press enter, and the result is one pass, zero failed, and one ignored. All right, just like that. So, if you want to actually access some functions outside the inner module, we can define some. Let's just say fn, all right, make a new function called give2. This function gives you the number 2. It will return an integer i32, just like that. So now I'm just going to get rid of the ignore here, all right. So now we're going to, instead of putting 2 inside here, we're going to call this function and put it inside there. We can use the super keyword here to access the outer scope. This is an inner module, it's inner, so to access the outer scope we get boom super. We're saying super get underscore 2 and do the same thing for this one down here. Save this one, run this test, we should see obviously the two passes. And we do, no we don't, ah, give to give two, try it again, we should be fine. Alrighty, and we get two pass, perfect. Okay. Now I'll do one more example, this time with structs. Okay, so I'm going to define a new struct up here inside the, I guess, global scope, and we'll call this struct rectangle. So we'll say struct and then rectangle. Alright, this will have Two, um, two members, a width of type U8 and a height of type U8. Now, we're going to make a new function or a new method on this, on this struct to test if the rectangle is a square or not. So we'll say IMPL rectangle and make a new method. We'll say FN is square. This will obviously take in that self-reference. And this will return a boolean type. We're going to say self.width equals self.height. So this function will return true if the width and height of this rectangle is the same, therefore being a square. Okay? We can use this struct inside a test function. So down here I'm going to say, okay, fn test structs. Give that attribute up here, so we'll say, okay, hashtag test, okay, so now I'm going to make a new rectangle struct, so I'm going to say let r equals super and then rectangle and give some member values, we'll say width of 50 and a height of 25, so this is not going to be a, um, a square, so now down here we can say, okay, assert not equals r dot actually sorry we're going to say assert 
assert, okay, normal assert, r dot is square. All right, this test should panic. It should fail because we're saying r is a square. It's not a square. So we can use hashtag should panic up here to make sure that this will actually panic. Okay, we run this test and we should see we are all good. And we get boom three passed. All right. So here, if I was to make this 50-50, this test will fail because I'm saying that it should panic, but it's going to not panic. So it's going to fail. All right. We'll get rid of that right there. And we have this perfectly fine successful test right there. That is the basics of testing in Rust. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.